Cupping, is it really effective or is it some barbaric old ritual? Find out right now. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review of my experience doing cupping for about two years. A little bit of my backstory with cupping. I went to a massage parlor that offered it and I think I paid like 20, 30 bucks or whatever it was for like a little cupping session and it was nice, it was decent. After that, I went on Amazon and found my own cupping set for about $35. And ever since then, I've been just kind of using that periodically, and it's been one of my most used tools for over or underused muscles. And I did do a video on cupping a few years ago. I think I was actually at the beach, and a few months into COVID, randomly, the video was deleted by YouTube without any explanation. So let's get it out the way. I'm not a medical expert. This is not medical advice. Do your own research. Be safe. There are wrong ways to do cupping, so it's not like however you do cupping is 100% safe. For me, the way that I do it, Following a few rules, I have absolutely no issues. I think it's one of the safest things ever, but there are wrong ways to do it. So be very careful, do your own research before you get into cupping yourself. So some of the effects that I noticed from cupping, I think it's one of the best remedies to over or underused muscles. And it's really good at pinpointing target areas, areas of pain. So if you have like a knot or a specific spot that's sore, you just put the cup on that spot pump it up, and almost every time the tension goes away 100%. Again, I found it to be generally very safe. Um, cupping is very taboo. It's almost kind of like a religion or politics. People have their own opinion made up, and it's like, I don't even want to argue with them. There's no point in arguing. And some of the procedures that I follow to make cupping more safe are make sure to clean the cups every time that you use them. When you're cupping, you're actually like sucking the skin up and actually opens the pores. So your skin is more susceptible to any sort of toxins. So if you have dirty cups, things like that, you're basically opening your pores to the dirt. I think they say to use rubbing alcohol. Also don't leave them on for too long. Like I would say the longest you'd wanna do is about 20, maybe 25 minutes. Go ahead and Google like cupping chart or cupping map. It'll show you the best points to put the cups on your body. And you could kind of put them anywhere, but I found that if you follow those dots or the, the ways that they suggest online for you to do it, it's just more effective, it's more safe. You're not gonna be putting on a weird part of your body that's not good for cupping. Another thing I like about this cupping set from Amazon is I could reach almost all areas by myself. It comes with a little pumper and it's like got a little tube and then the cups on the end. So you could just put the cup like right here or right here and just pump it up. <laughs> So like, I mean, I could get almost every area of my body now. Maybe I'm more flexible than other people, but even if I was less flexible, I could get almost all the areas. It's actually really easy to do cupping on yourself. Okay, another thing I like about cupping is you could kind of see the issues that your body's having based on the cupping marks that it leaves. And also a lot of the times, if you're hitting an area that needs a lot of work, the area that you cupped will actually be cold. And I've heard that multiple times when people have seen my cupping, like older people, they're like, oh, it gets the cold air out. And so my thought process is like blood is warm. And so the area that I'm cupping probably doesn't have the best blood flow because I'm having knots and pains. So it's kind of sucking up all that old blood, all the old toxins that's not really getting circulated. I'll put a little picture on screen, but based on the mark that you get, it means a lot of different things. And it's really interesting to see which parts of your body create which spots. Okay, another thing to watch out with cupping is that it makes you really tired. So it's kind of a good thing because, you know, it'll help you go to sleep. Like you're probably tense, so now you're relaxing, but it's not something that I would do before I had to do tons of work, just in case you get tired. Now, I haven't gotten super tired from it in a long time, but I remember when I first started, that was a big thing. And I remember my friend bought his own set and he got tired too. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, another thing is drink lots of water because you basically have toxins in your body and now the toxins are up and like into the skin. And so your body's natural defenses and immune system can now start flushing them out. So make sure to drink lots of water afterwards. I always drink lots of water, so I don't have to really worry about that. But for most people, I don't think they do. Also be careful about where you expose your cupping marks right after you get them. Your pores are more open. It's easier for toxins to get back in. If you're wearing like a really dirty shirt, I wouldn't wear that. If you're going out in the wind or you're going in the shower because our drinking water has lots of bad stuff in the water, I would just keep the cupping marks clean for as long as you can afterwards. So there have been a few times that I've gotten blisters while cupping, but it's always in a specific area. And it's always when I've left the cup on for a long time. Like I don't know how long, maybe it was 
30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes. I just put the cupping on and got busy doing something and was like, oh my gosh, I got a bunch of blisters right there. But when you do research on it, apparently there's kind of like damp toxins. I don't really understand it fully, but there's damp toxins. And when you have a lot of damp toxins, the body will actually make blisters in that area to help remove the toxins even more. So the points that I've gotten blisters are always on the sides of my stomach and like the sides of my legs. I haven't got them anywhere else. And again, it's always been when I've left the cup on for a long, long, long time. I've never gotten a blister for leaving them on for even 15 or 20 minutes. You don't have to worry about it. If you end up getting blisters, I would probably try to get some sort of cleaner, like hydrogen peroxide, maybe rubbing alcohol, I'm not too sure. And then put that on a Band-Aid and then put the Band-Aid over the blisters. Some people say you could pop them Mm, yeah, but I mean, I would have something to clean it out right there because it's a lot of toxins. And once you pop it, it's pretty much like an open wound. So I'm sure you want to avoid it and I want to avoid it too. Just make sure to not cup longer than 15 to 20 minutes and you'll be good. Okay, another little thing I noticed about cupping kind of like a tips and tricks is there'll be times where you'll put a big cup on a problem area and you'll get almost nothing. Like it won't really show any marks or something. And you'll put a smaller cup in the same area and that smaller cup will just be completely dark. There are times where you need bigger or smaller cups, and sometimes if you use a bigger cup than you need, it actually doesn't flush out the toxins, which is crazy, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Most of the time, the big cups work, but sometimes you need one of those little ones. All right, then the last thing I noticed about cupping is there is like no discomfort. I totally get where you're coming from. If I had never seen cupping, it looks like a bruise. It looks like you literally just bruised your body and said, oh yeah, I'm doing some natural holistic thing that's helping my body when it's just like, nah, you bruised yourself. Cupping marks are not bruises. Whenever you have a bruise, it hurts and it breaks all the blood vessels. It's not good for your body. Almost every single cupping mark I've ever gotten has no pain. And the times that I do feel a little pain is when I've used it on a weird area, like a just, just some weird random area that I've never seen anybody use it on. I'm just kind of trying it out, which is why I recommended following the cupping chart. So you're never gonna put the cups in those weird areas. You're always gonna put them in the best area so you won't have that issue. But 99% of the time, I don't feel anything. So anyways, guys, that's been my experience with cupping after two years. There are some ways that you could do cupping wrong. There are ways that you could hurt yourself. I've never done the wet cupping, which which is a whole nother level to it. I don't know if I'm really ready for that. Um, there's also fire cupping. So I assume there are some risks to that as well, but I don't use that. I use like the suction cups from Amazon. So anyways, guys, I highly recommend it. Really flushes out the muscles, really gets those pinpoint problem areas. You could do it by yourself. It doesn't hurt, it helps 100%, it's great. So my cupping set used to be $35 on Amazon. I bought two of them so far. And I do wanna say that I've dropped the cups numerous times and not one of the cups has ever broken. Anyways, guys, I personally can't recommend it enough, but be careful, do your own research and make sure if you're doing cupping, you're doing it properly. Anyways, guys, have you tried cupping therapy? Have you tried any other kinds of far out therapies like cryotherapy or sensory deprivation tank, acupuncture, massage? Let me know all your body health tricks down below. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day. Out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace